KIDS 301. Um, Saturday special here. I turned off my cartoons. and uh, No, actually, I turned off my Badgers against Notre Dame. And I've still got Liverpool on here. So I reserve the right to stop and cheer my team if they do score. Anyways, welcome to this special video where I will try to get you all straightened out on APA formatting, uh, formatting at a university level. As I mentioned, it's um, it's uh, it's um, unfortunate if you haven't been uh, exposed or taught a uh, proper way to uh, format a paper at university. But it's a 300 level course, it's upper division, there are expectations which are reasonable. And, and I do fault a lot of issues. You know, one is that many instructors just don't care, which is very detrimental uh, to things. Also, um, there's too many discussion boards. I may have talked about that. I'm trying to cut those down and make them into papers instead of discussion boards. That way you have a chance to do formatting. Now, formatting is about as hard as, you know, riding a bike the first time. But after that, you got it. It's a piece of cake. Trust me, I'm not overwhelmingly nitpicky about formatting, but these are the basics that I'm going to go over with you. Um, for whatever reason, the eight or I think nine out of ten papers I I um, reviewed this morning were just not passable. Uh, I do get extreme then in my slashes and things because I do offer I offered them all the opportunity to do their work to do the paper again. Caveat is to wait for this video and to get it right. And we'll get to the end of that and we'll talk about what's going on here. So I want you to, if you can, you should go back to the intro module. That was from August 19th to the 22nd. And there is APA formatting guide for writing, the OWL at Purdue. Now it's a whole page. It says required for this course, Times New Roman 12 point font. That's it. That's it. The whole thing. Times Roman 12 point font. Unless you get some bigger heading, I get it. Okay. Double line spacing. The entire paper has to be double line spaced, including your works cited list. Okay. Paragraph indents. That is a requirement listed here. There were a few papers that did not have a single paragraph indent. That is not how papers are written. I even mentioned a lot of these things in the last few videos or so. So I'm just going to go over these. And again, I said there is a pause button somewhere that you can hit and you can jot down and make your own list so that you can check it off to know that you've done it correctly. OK. And again, it's your choice. I mean, uh, there's nothing that's going on in this world that's not your choice. You live in a great free country that pretty much you can decide to do things. There are consequences, of course. So let's just keep going. All right. Everything is in a Word doc or Word doc X. Haven't had that problem yet, you know, in terms of papers. Okay. Now the formatting, I'm going to get into, I'm going to look at my notes because uh, that's where I had it kind of generalized. But if you go to this page that I talked about, you'll see it. I'm not trying to show it to you in detail here, but I'm showing you it exists. And you can go to the Purdue Owl home. I would go to APA basic in-text citations on the OWL, and you see what you get here? You get this page here. Now, this is how I learned. I didn't know anything about formatting before I was 52, okay? I'm not a big expert, but I taught myself. I found this website, Purdue OWL. It was told to me it was a great one. There's every possible type of citing is in here, so why not use it, right? Why guess? If you're guessing, you're not demonstrating academic rigor, okay? So uh, you got citation basics in here, in tech. Now you don't have to overdo it. Like I said, if you look at their entire APA 7th style, 7th edition, blah, 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 you'll hear things about abstracts and cover page, lots of stuff. No, I said no, none of that. The only thing I'm looking at basics are what I'm talking about here, okay? So that's why I, I don't wanna go too far into this in terms of it being the description we're gonna use. I want you to list it out from me. So, so far we've talked, we have, talking about the font, Times New Roman 12, okay? The color, all black. You don't know how many papers I get that have two different blacks. It's either from copying and pasting or something, but if you have two different blacks, I'm gonna ding you. Simple, simple solution as 
highlight everything, make it all the same black, right? Okay, double line spacing we talked about, paragraph indents we talked about, okay? Um, subheadings, that means like, especially for maps, let's say you say you got uh, concepts. So you name some concepts. Okay, I mean, all these are subheadings of the different categories, eight categorizing, but this isn't subfields. I'm talking about subheadings where you're going to list some things. Don't number these categories one through eight. In fact, I don't even want to see any numbers on your page. You could indent there if you want, and then you can write, or you could just space again, line space, and write the different concepts individually. And then another bold subheading for the next thing, which would be theories. Okay? I don't want you to write those in narrative form. I'm not going to sit here and paste, oh, there they wrote about this concept and it stopped here at this concept. I mean, I've had students be creatively organized in terms of, let's see, you know, so their their title of paper is, you know, 14, whatever font and they're 16 or whatever. They're, they're subheadings for each of the criteria, the eight of them, they're like 14. And then if they have the list, if they're going to list some concepts and theories, not they, they'll probably bold it in, you know, I'm sorry, 14 and 12, they'll bold it so I can see it real clearly and I'll keep them separate. It's very good, well organized, okay? In fact, I think if you look at the um, sample, it might be like that. I'm not sure though. Okay, hot links. There should be no hot links in your paper. There should be no URLs in your paper. Any hot links should be featured in the work cited for the citation, not in the paper, not. I've said this before, I know I did. Obviously it got glossed over, okay. Um, it's all APA, that's what we're gonna use, APA. No MLA, no Chicago. No one's asked me about those to use those, so we're sticking with APA, okay? Um, uh, turn it in. Turn it in is a review score that it goes through and it reviews it for plagiarism, okay? That's a strong word. It's very accusatory. I'm not a fan of it, but it is what it is. If, you're, if your turn it in score is coming up over 25, and even if it's 25, that's just a random number. You should be able to look at all your your review, turn it in review, and you'll see it highlighted. You'll see the source that it came from. Are you quoting those? Are you paraphrasing enough that you can cite it that way? If it's coming in in the turn it in score, it typically is word for word. Now, of course, there's going to be exceptions to the, you know, your work cited list is all going to be, you know, looked at as being used before. There's other places, right? General terms, the word the, whatever. I know how to tell the difference. If your paper, though, comes back with a high turn in score and you don't have things in quotes, et cetera, stuff like that, we're going to have problems with that. Sorry. Okay. So that's important. Uh, again, I talked about that narrative form. I mean, it's one thing if you're going to use the description of your discipline and, you know, obviously you're going to write it out, blah, blah, blah. But when you get the concepts, key concepts, theories, academic associations, journals, um, associations, research methods, research questions. If there are individual thoughts involved in these, which there are, break them up accordingly. Don't just write one long, endless paragraph until you get to the next next uh, section, right? Okay. Um, I'm not going to get citations. Yeah, I don't want to get through some other things. We talked about those things. Uh, let's see. No charts or visuals. I don't want any charts. I don't want any visuals. I don't want any guides. I don't want any of that. Use your words. <laughs> it's not that difficult. Okay. Um, try. This is a challenge. And if you go to my 302 class, you're going to be required to meet this challenge. And it's not difficult. Trust me. Every student I've had has done it. Okay. Maybe it's done on a second try, but they've done it. And that is, do not use I, me, my, or the royal we, whoever that is. We will be discussing. Who's we? You got a team back there? Okay, you get rid of those things because this paper is not about you. That's a tough thing for students to recognize. They do my 302, 301. It's not about you. This is one of those papers. It's not the introduction. It's not your plan of study. It's not about you. It's about your disciplines, your concentrations, right? So your challenge is to get rid of I, me, my. To get rid of the next thing I will describe, discuss is, no, you're going to already do it. Just do it. You don't, you don't introduce it with, so I'm asking you, I'm trying to show you ways to step up your writing to a higher level. You can do this. It's very good, okay? Do not say, 
I chose this because I did it. I, I'm, 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 I'm bringing this up because stay away from that stuff. Okay. And no, we No, we're going to look at this or that. We No, it's not. We, it's not a family project. Right. Um, also, uh, watch out for hyperbole and, 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 and infinitives in depth of fit and infinite infinites. Sorry. Um, Hyperbole is exaggeration, right? It's building something up. Communication is the greatest discipline because, I mean, nobody said that, but I'm saying that's hyperbole. Okay. In business, there are an infinite amount of concepts. No, there's not. That's hyperbole. Okay. So remember, get rid of hyperbole. All right. Um, Business encompasses all of whatever. No, nothing encompasses all. Nothing, nothing. You stay, you keep away from all, keep away from nothing, keep away from never, keep away from always. Those are infinite, infinitive absolutes that don't belong in scholarly papers or exaggerations like hyperbole. Okay, another tip. That was another tip. So write these down. Uh, okay, so now let's get into citations. Okay. So in-text citations in APA format. So I'm just gonna give you an example. You have a article from an academic journal written by John Smith. And the article is titled, Sustainability in the Home by John Smith, 2019. So you're in text, that means in the text, you're quoting from John Smith, now you're saying, Okay, according to Smith, because we don't use first names in the paper, you don't. No first names, no first names, just last name. According to Smith, in the journal, in high, high, italicize, in the journal American Society of Sustainability, parentheses 2019, said... Sustainability in the home will be the uh, the fad of the future and must be, you know, accomplished. So all that is quotes. And then you close quote it. After you close quote it, you don't put the period. You don't put the question mark. You don't put any punctuation. After the other quote, close quote, you put the citation in parentheses. Okay. Now, I don't want to get micromanaged, but some people need to hear this. After the quote mark, there's a space. Then there's an open parenthesis. Then there's the author's last name, Smith. Then there's a comma. Then there's a space. Then there's a year, 2019. Then there's a close quote. Then there's punctuation. Now, if we have the page number, then after the year, you put another comma, another space. Then you put P dot and the space and the page number, then close quotes. I mean, that, then close parentheses. Okay. It's all in here. It's all in. The Purdue Owl, it, I'm going to double check because I want to see if it's in your sample. I know it's it's in this page that I put in Canvas. Formatting, okay, it comes before the punctuation. Author, last name, and year, comma, and year. Author, last name, comma, year, page number. It comes after the closed quote marks but before the punctuation. Same thing here. That's when using quoting or paraphrasing. Um very simple. It is. It's just simple. Now, if you have something challenging, how am I going to cite multiple authors? How am I going to cite cite a, a paper that doesn't have an author? How am I going to cite a website? Go to the Purdue All and look. That's what you do. That's what I did. You can do it. So it says in-text citations, the basics, in-text citation, author slash authors, reference list, basic rules, references. It has every possible way to cite and format and work cited list. Okay. And you find it. It's called academic rigor. All right. Now, the works cited list. Every It starts at the top of the first blank page after the composition. I don't care if the composition ends at the first line of a page. You skip the whole rest of that page. You go to the top of the next page. And you put works cited in the, in the middle. W, capital W, O, R, K, S, space, capital C, I, T, E, D. And then you get into it. It is an alphabetized order, alphabetical order by last name, okay, or by the publication, I suppose. I really like names, but by last name. If there's a last name, you don't use the publication. If there's no last name, you figure out what you got to do, okay? 
Last names. Then you can have the last name, comma, first initial, period. All right. Same as up in the citation. I'll get to this in text. If you have multiple authors, if you have two authors, use an ampersand in between the names. No comma, ampersand when it's in the parentheses. If you use both, like Smith and Jones, in the sentence, it is the word and. But in the citation, it is Smith ampersand Jones, okay, comma, year, right? Similarly, down in the works cited list, you will have, you'll see it. You'll see it in the, in the Purdue thing. You have the last name, comma, first initial, period. You could have another name in there. You'll, you'll see how it's done it's, if you look. But you need to look. You have to, teach, you have to teach yourself something here. This is what it is, okay? It's like you taught yourself how to ride a bike. Nobody could ride it for you. You could show you how to ride it. It wouldn't help you. You got to do it. So you got to do it. Okay. So the works cited list is in hanging paragraph form. If you don't know why, are you guessing? Hanging paragraph form is not regular paragraph form. And I'm just being fancy by saying the word hanging. It's also not center justified. That's a whole different thing. Now Brentford's leading. Now I'm going to be really mad at everybody. No, no. <laughs> okay, so now um, I'm going to lose my concentration. So uh, you must include all the sources cited in text in the works cited list. Whatever's in the works cited list has to be in the text somewhere. I have to be able to go control find, and if I see the word, you know, schnapps in there written by schnapps i got to type control fine and schnapps should pop up on top the exact same spelling okay one for the other they all have to match okay that's part of it this is disciplined writing scholar university upper division coursework and it's so easy after you've done it it's so much better than just having this haphazard method of no paragraphs, no citations, bad citations, center justified, work cited, work cited in the wrong place. Oh my God, please. Okay. You got this. You're going to step up your game and do it now. So, okay. Now let's see. In terms of the sources used, so far so good. It's just a reminder. Do not use Wikipedia. Do not use an encyclopedia. Do not use Merriam-Webster. If your discipline is business and you just cited Merriam-Webster dictionary, that's going to get dinged significantly. No dictionaries, no encyclopedias, no Wikipedias, no Investopedias. Okay? The best thing to do, and I've given you this tip, can't fail, is to use academic journals. you got to find some anyways for your category. Use the articles in journals. They are peer-reviewed, and they are good to go. All right? Now, let's talk about substance, because you're like, dude, this guy is freaking me out. He's all about formatting, formatting, formatting. Yes, and my reviews show that, and people hate it. There's a significant – I mean, it's when I say people, because it's like there's this meme that we have in academia. It's like positive evaluations is a picture of this little tugboat, you know, positive evaluations down here. And then you got like one negative evaluation. It looks like the Titanic, you know. So I'm not going to react. I do say that it pisses people off. And I am sorry that you came to university to get a disciplined university education that you're stepping up your game, right? But you're going to get it here. All right. So substance. You will be dinged for being light on things. The first category is description of discipline. If you're not citing something in there, even quoting, you're not doing it right. Because then you're just telling you're telling me what marketing is based on your knowledge of marketing. No, again, this is not about you regurgitating. This is about you backing up your knowledge. OK, it's about you coalescing and, and, and disseminating the important parts of your discipline. They are not you bringing those to the table. You can bring them to the table, but you better know where you can find how to source that to back it up. None of us, including me, are credentialed enough to be spokespersons, spokespeople on our disciplines, period. You cannot write this paper and not use sources. This isn't a regurgitation paper. Tell me what you know. This is show me what you know. Back it up. Back it up by the people in your field who have the credentials. Okay. 
And it's important to do that. We have to do it. That's what about academia is. You're building on knowledge, previous knowledge as you go. You just don't, it just doesn't happen through the ether and osmosis. You learn it somewhere. Description of discipline, again, should be thorough. Should describe the discipline. Maybe give me a little history of the discipline. Maybe, you know, talk about is the discipline widely used? Is it, is it you know, what is it? Tell me about it. We're tied up. No, I'm in a good mood. One to one. Okay. So now, um, subfields. Subfields are also disciplines. I'm going to change it, I think, to related fields, directly related. Okay. Subfields are not like little concepts underneath the field. The field. Subfields means that uh, a subfield under music could be classical music. It could be woodwinds. You could get degrees in those things. Okay, subfields are in themselves fields. They're degrees. They are within the realm of your field that you have there. And that's why I explained last week in the video that if, you're, if your field already feels very specific, specified, then yes, you can look at it like a hub and a wheel and you can go this way and this way. And there is no hierarchy then, okay? So if you think, logistics is way too specific, which it might be, then and what does it go with? Logistic goes with what? Transportation? What? With uh, marketing? What? With, uh, um, there's, a, there's a number of things. I'm not a logistics guy, so I don't know what they are. I picked a bad one. But you don't have to go under it as a hierarchy as much as, you know, like sub means underneath. I grant you that. But I explained that in this case, yeah, sub would be great for communication. Because look, you got communication. That's your field. What are subfields of communication? How about nonverbal communication? How about verbal communication? I mean, those are, those are, I, I took a course in college that was about communication skills, nonverbal communication. I took, um, and these are courses, but I'm trying to think of degrees. Communication might be, um, Public relations might be communication, right? Um, what else could be subfield of communication? Uh, could there be methods of communication? Look at you got to look at your degree. You got to do the rigor. You got to get in there and search it. You don't. You don't. You don't come to this college course anything and say, "Well, my knowledge is already going to get me through." No, you got to learn. And the way you learn is you go onto the internet, go onto the library. Look for books of communication. Look for, go to Google Scholar if you have to. Just be careful and go, just Google then. Degrees in communication. Be an explorer in your field. Don't be sitting back saying, why did you tell me what you want? Okay. I want you to go get that. All right. So that's description of discipline, subfields of discipline, key concepts. Key concepts are key concepts. They're not key principles. So if the first sentence you write after key concepts is these are key principles, then they're not concepts. I want to see key concepts. Okay? And there is a attachment about concepts and theories and the differences. Okay? How many would I like key concepts? Probably four, I think, would be good. Three to five. Three is, eh. Your, your discipline should have a number of concepts. Concepts are pretty easy. Okay? And, and just defining them, describing them. Showing me where you found them from. What source did you get them from? Theories. Theories are not models. If it says the model of this, it's not a theory. It's going to be a theory of something. It's going to be the something theory or the theory of something. All disciplines have them. If you don't find any, if you can't find any, you let me know, and we're going to, have to set up a call, and we'll work on it together. I will help you, but I won't do it for you. Okay? Theories are theories, and they're in there. Okay? You can't have disciplines without their own theories, concepts. I mean, they share them, but they have their own too, you know. Um, journals. Journals are not articles. Journals are, hold on a second. Excuse me. Okay, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? You know, this is really frustrating here because I got a whole boatload of them. All right, then you know what? Hang on a second. I am not going to sit still for this. Oh, man, where are they? got to be kidding me. How unprepared can I be, huh? I am going to find these damn things. <laughs> You're joking. Oh, here we go. Jesus, finally. 
Okay, here we go. Thank you for thank you for waiting. All right, see this? Issues in interdisciplinary studies. This is an academic journal. Okay. It's got an issue there, right? Okay, it used to be called Integrative Studies. And in this, this is a journal. So this is exactly what you would look for, journals. You can go to Google and type in academic journals or um, academic journals in communication, academic journals in biology, and you'll find a million of them, a million. They'll be from public, they're, they're different publishers. Do not use the publisher. There's Sage Publishing, there's Harvard Publishing, there's Boston College Publishing, all kinds of publishing houses. Those aren't journals, but those have websites where you'll get journals. So this is a journal. It has a particular Association for Interdisciplinary Studies. There's a little bit about it, right? Membership. I'm a member of this. Bill Newell, that's the guy you were um, reading about. William Newell, he passed away, unfortunately. Uh, it's 2018. So this is volume 36, number two. There are all kinds of articles in here. See these articles? By Julie Thompson Klein. You've heard of Klein. We talked about Klein. Rick Sozdak, he's a big deal here too. So now that's, I'm sorry, that's the uh, contents with the uh, the people in charge, right? Oh no, articles. So William Newell wrote Integrity in Education. Julie Thompson Klein, Advancing Interdisciplinary Studies, The Boundary Work of Integrating, Complexifying, and Professionalizing. Stuart Henry, Beyond Interdisciplinary Theory, Revisiting William Newell's Integrative Theory from a Critical... So if I was had to do interdisciplinary studies, no one here is doing that. Integrative theory is one of those theories, right? That's a journal. Inside our articles. So when you put... You go for the journals, you're looking for the journals. These, the books. When you get to the associations... Association of Interdisciplinary Studies, right? You're getting the associate, those are academic associations, okay? When you say professional slash academic association, I prefer academic. Some of them it's, you can find like real estate. There might be more real estate professional associations. The problem with these things is they get to be biased, biased journals. So be careful there, associations. Um, then you've got research methods and a section on research questions. Well, here's where you got it, in here. Now you're talking about the articles. Look at some of the articles in these journals and find out when they're doing research, what did they do? They say in a quantitative study, in a qualitative study, you might find it somewhere else too, in a description of the discipline about what it uses. You may find you know, the research questions. Those, those might be titles of papers, right? Research questions, okay? Um, Interdisciplinary, interdisciplinarity versus anti-intellectual, anti-democratic impulses. That's research right there. Okay, the impact of Newell's theory of interdisciplinary studies, reflection and analysis. This is where you find this stuff, okay? So then you put it all together and you're doing it for two disciplines. I'm pushing a half hour here and I'm really trying to make sure I covered everything for everybody. Obviously, formatting is important because once you get it, it's such a piece of cake, I slide right through it. My 302 class formats every paper. And once they get past that first one, we just slide through like glass. It's beautiful. Paper's looking great, looking beautiful. You can do this. You just didn't know. You just didn't know. You weren't listening to me. You didn't take it seriously. Whatever. It's fine. All is forgiven. Now let's move forward, okay? So, oh, come on. You got to make that. Okay, so I'm going to do one Easter egg here because I think it'll be helpful, all right? The Easter egg proves to me that you watch this video and I'll tell you what you get for this. The Easter egg is, I think I know how to format it now, right? So I, I, so do that if you're honest. I think I know how to format it now. And when you send me that, you get to turn in your maps one and two. You have a new deadline, which is before midnight on Tuesday. How is that? So I'm not punitive, you see that? I don't try to be punitive with students. You help me out, I help you out. I'd rather read your papers on Wednesday and have them looking spiffy than have to go through what I went through this morning, okay? And again, thank you to those who posted early. I really mean that, because I always like to see what am I gonna get, what am I gonna get? You overwhelmingly showed me that I needed to put this out there and be clear about my expectations. And what expectations should be for every course and every paper, okay? 
So let me know if you have questions, comments, concerns about this. And 30 minutes, I'm out of here. I got stuff to do. Peace.